Hey, there's strangers. It's time for another 2 p.m. PST Twitch stream. I'm your host, Strange Bro Jim. And today we are going to be getting back into some Pega studies. So you all can see the screen. There we go. Um, so, um, we're going to be going through the challenge here for Pega, uh, creating a data model. Um, been uploading a lot of videos to YouTube concerning Pega. So if you're watching this, you know, right now on stream, um, know that, you know, I've covered up to this point, you know, and I've been posting all those videos to YouTube. So if you want to see, <laughs> me going through it and you know you want to follow along you're welcome to um obviously this is taking longer than uh you know their projected times which you know i didn't really feel like they were accurate to begin with myself but you know it is what it is um you know, felt to me like they were doing the speed reading for, you know, how long it would take you. <laughs> so, like, for example, this one is saying that it's going to last 10 minutes to get through it all. Sure, if you want to speed through it and maybe you learn something from it. I mean, it doesn't look like it's going to be, you know, that long to go through. But we'll see. Um... Matter of fact, I'm just going to go ahead and initialize the Pega instance right now. Um, just know that I'm not endorsed by Pega at all. Um, this is just for my benefit and for anybody else that is watching right at this moment in time. If you feel like, um, you know, this might benefit you in some way, then I hope, you know, I hope that's the case. Let me know if it does, because, uh, you know, I'd like to know, you know, if it, if these videos are indeed helping someone else. So, um, you know, even if it's a YouTube comment, you know, uh, would be appreciated. Um, otherwise, I'm just talking to Dead Space or Dead Air, and that's okay. You know, um, it, it. I'm doing this, um, you know, that, that's not endorsed by Pega, um, and I'm not an instruction, it's, I'm, I'm not a teacher, you know, I'm not one of their, you know, trained specialist instructor-led training or anything along those lines, so don't, don't make that assumption about me, okay? Um, what, you know, as I've said in the past, um, you know, I am just trying to get the system architect certification. Um, failed at it in the past, but I want to work towards trying to get it. So this is my, I guess, second attempt to really like learn everything that there is about Pega to try to get the certification. Um, you know, I might try the business architect as well seeing it is closely related to system architect not not completely but closely um you know there are some differences in modules so um but uh so i'm going to be going through this challenge today um probably not going to be getting going through anything else um you know, if anybody that is like has a decent understanding of Pega, is Pega trained, is a Pega trainer, or works from for Pega or something along those lines, you know, any of the above, um, you know, my videos concerning the data model um, have been quite confusing for me, so. Um, at the very least, if you can, um, look at those videos and comment on them, um, 
you know, maybe he can help clear up some of the misunderstandings that I might have on it. Um, or, you know, maybe, maybe it's just, maybe it's just miswording on that I'm reading or something along those lines. You know, maybe, maybe I am reading it correctly, but, you know, it's being conveyed incorrectly. You know, I don't know. That's, that's my problem is that I'm not sure. Uh, just feels, feels off in some way. So I just might not be seeing it properly. It's totally possible. Okay. Um, like I mentioned before, you know, I was struggling in geometry and sun until someone actually, you know, showed me where my misunderstandings were and showed me how to um, handle that. So uh, I'll always be thankful to Chris, my tutor, uh, for for helping me uh, better understand geometry. So, okay. Um, we move on. Um, so, you know, I doubt that Chris will ever see this video, but, you know, just in case he does, you know, I want to thank him for that. Um, if he ever comes across these. <laughs> okay. Um, again, I highly doubt, but you never know. Um, okay. So, scenario. When creating an application, consider the data model. The data model defines how users store and retrieve the data in your application. In the MyTown application, you need the following data objects. A data object for a person that submits a request. A data object with the details of the request. Create a data object for the submitter, which contains name, address, and phone number. Create a data object for the request type, which contains records for type, description, and department. The following table provides the credentials that you need to complete the challenge, and of course, you know, username and password. So let me go ahead and launch the instance here. Put everything in. There we go. Logging in. Now that will take a little bit of time to take care of that. So, um, as I mentioned before, this walkthrough will go through, you know, have a video of showing you, you know, step by step of, you know, going through everything here. Um, I'm not going to bother watching it right at this moment in time. You know, you'll, you can use it if you want to, if you're getting stuck or if you're having some issues with this. Um, I'm going to try to go step by step through this uh, without skipping anything and um, see if it, matches up with the way they went about doing it so um so first off you know uh it's create a person data object in the navigation pane of the app studio click data to display a list of data objects in the application so uh here we are in the app studio here my town once again um you know, if you look at the case types, you know, you'll notice that, you know, there's, there's probably going to be some of the old uh, case types that were, that has been kind of worked on in previous instances, but it's not the same one. Just bear that in mind. It's, it's a case type for this specific uh, process. So, but we need to go to data. And it will show us all the data objects. And lo and behold, hey, there's no data objects. At least yet. Okay, so uh, next step. In the upper right, click New to open the Create Data Object dialog box. So not the Add Data Object here. They're wanting me to do New. I don't know if there's any difference between the two at this at this particular stage. 
I don't know. Maybe I'll like rerun the instance later to see if there's really any difference between the two. But we'll, we'll find out. Um, we'll just stick with the steps for now. And we'll deal with it as we move forward. So, uh, while it's working on that, uh, apparently this create data object dialog box will open up and in the date object name and for field type person. Okay, so, uh, so here we are in the create data object. They want me to put person here in the field for the data object name. Um, let's see if there's anything else that they're going to have me do for this. Uh, click next to display the data object connection details. No, they did not. Okay. Um, it's, I, I kind of wish that they, uh, explored this a little bit more, you know, like, you know, what, uh, you know, what exactly will, would this mean? You know, what's the different, you know, you know, define source data now, later, you know, what happens if you click later, you know, it doesn't really go over that. So that's, that's kind of unfortunate, but we'll move on. They want us to click next. So, all right. And the system system list, keep the default value of Pega, then click submit to create and display a new person data object. So, um, so there's a lot of systems that you can choose from here, but you know, they want us to kind of keep with Pega here. So, um, they don't want to create data model using the spreadsheet either. So, um, I'm kind of curious as to how you could actually go about doing that, but again, we're not, we're not working with that. Um, you know, so far they're showing us a lot of information, you know, just with these two steps here and they haven't addressed it anywhere in the challenge or in the topics yet. So either it could be. You know, they might explain it in the senior version, maybe, or we haven't gotten into those those particular steps yet. Okay, they may address it like in a later module or a later challenge or whatnot. So, so we're just gonna have to put a pen in it for now. But, um, I mean, ideally, I mean, if if they really wanted to, you know, uh, it'd be ideal if they could basically say, you know. Uh, you know, here, you know, events will be covered in, you know, module so-and-so, or define source data will be covered in, uh, in this challenge or something along those lines. Okay. You know, give, give some information about, you know, where, um, you know, where, you know, I can find more information about it. You know, that would be nice. That would be, you know, a way to kind of say, hey, we know that we're skipping this, but, you know, we'll get to it later, you know, um, or at the very least, you know, we'll, we'll explain it more in this particular module, mission, chapter, whatever, you know, um, challenge, what have you, right? It'd be nice. We'll see if they ever do that, but whatever. All right. Um, so we've clicked submit and we created our data object for person. Yeah. Uh, and as already, we can see our data model has globally unique ID. Okay. And label. Again. Okay. Uh, so we have the globally unique ID, you know, PYGO ID, uh, and then PY label here. So, um, you know, keep these in mind because you, you see these 
you know, quite often, or at least in my experience, I've, I've seen them often enough. So, um, okay. Uh, on the data model tab, click add field to create a new field for the person data object. So uh, we're in the data model and they want us to do the add field. It'd be nice if they actually had a, like a visual of this, but I mean, they, they can't really show everything or I mean, they could, but I mean, it would be like a lot of images, right? So, um, okay. In the field name, uh, in the field name field, say that three times fast, uh, enter first name to name the field. So, first name. Uh, verify the type defaults to text, single line, which it does. And click submit and add another to create a new field. Okay, so they want me to click this one to not only add first name, but to basically bring this window back up to build a new one, another one. Um, they didn't go through advanced, which again is another one of those things where it's like, you know, address this, you know, um, you know. Now I can look at this and go, okay, you know, description makes sense, max length, okay. Can I increase the max length? You know. Um, you know, does it have to remain in, you know, um, multiples of four or multiples of eight? Well, yeah, multiples of eight, you know, um, hard to say, you know, um, you know, what's, you know, what do, you know, how do you handle expected length, you know, um, because some people's first names can be really short um, and others can be extremely long too. So, um, but you know, they didn't really address the advanced. So we'll move on. Okay. So, um, so we're going to be repeating steps seven through nine to add three more fields, last name, address, and phone as shown in the following image. So, so that's what we need to see. Um, what, you know, what they did. Okay. So there's, there's a problem here because for phone, we're not doing text, the single line, uh, because if you see here, uh, I mean, if you see for address in phone for type, it's different than text single line. So these instructions are not necessarily correct. So, um, but you know, follow follow what they have here, and build the three more fields accordingly. So. So the next one is last name, and it is indeed a text single line. So, okay, that one's being added right now. We're going to go ahead and move on to address, and address is text paragraph. Um, now, as you can see, there's multiple different types, which hasn't really been addressed at all. Now, I know that it will be addressed because, I mean, there's there's a lot of information here, but they're not going to be covering that just yet. So, so we'll just kind of continue moving on. Uh, display is plain text. Yes. So, um, could be rich text, but 
We're sticking with plain text. Okay, address was added complete, uh, correctly. And now we have phone. And that, it, you know, that has the type of phone. So, um, now I don't know um, how the type phone works per se, because um, phone numbers can be different depending on where you are located. You know, like here in the States, you know, with the area code, you know, three digit area code and a seven digit number. Yeah. Um, you know, that's different than say, you know, well, I'm, I'm assuming that's going to be different in like, you know, United Kingdom or Germany or, you know, anything along those lines. So, um, so yeah, you know, would this, would, you know, how does the type here work? Because advanced isn't, isn't really addressing that. You would think advanced and then maybe saying, you know, hey, um, do you want this particular field to be, um, you know, local to whomever, you know, uh, you know, do you want this to be, you know, person's local or do you want this to be just a standard, you know, blank slate of phone number we're just going to take whatever they give us and not really worry about like area codes or whatnot is this going to be completely numeric you know i don't know if um i'm not sure if uh if every country sticks to a you know specific a numerical uh, value. Um, I mean, way back in the day, you know, it you 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 just basically said, "Hey, I'm trying to reach this particular address phone number," and then the you know lady would connect to you, right? Um, or man, well, yeah, it was, it was typically receptionist who was, was well. I mean, I you know I don't know you know maybe there were men doing that job too. I don't know. It, it, in in movies and stuff like that it was typically represented by a woman doing that particular job but you know who's you know could have been a man doing it too so i mean whatever um it's not it's not be problematic there <laughs> um okay moving on uh, so this is, I'm a little worried about that, but whatever. Okay. Um, that was all that they wanted me to add. So I will just do the submit to add the phone because we're not adding anything else after phone. Okay. They didn't really address that either here. So... Uh, the address is captured in one text paragraph field to keep this challenge brief. In a real-world application, an out-of-the-box address data object would use a promote reuse. Would be used to promote reuse. Oh, okay. So, so basically, they're saying, hey, instead of using a, you know, a field for address they would use a data object of address so that you can reuse that object over and over and over again in your application. So, in the upper right, click save to commit the fields to the data object. So, so save. Okay. Now, create a request type data object. In the upper left, click back to previous page. 
Okay. They don't really cover any of the other tabs, but again, they might cover it later. So we'll just kind of give them the benefit of the doubt on this, right? You know, um, you know, kind of wish that they address that because, um, I mean, if you're if you're dealing with the, you know, person data object, you know, here let's go back to here. Okay, you'll want to know. You're, you know, you're going to want to, um, you know, you're probably going to be needing to fill a lot of this in or change a lot of this. Um, or, you know, have, um, have other information placed here. So, um, but they didn't cover that. So, again, we'll have to... Um, We'll have to deal with that later. Okay. All right. Uh, in the upper right, click new to open the create data object dialog box. If it opens up. having some issues here. Okay, there we go. Um, so notice how we went from this view here to, you know, basically this view here. Okay. So, you know, now we have the data model and the data integration map available now that we have a data object here so um, once again we have the create data box uh, data object dialog box and we need to put request type into the name now once again they're not addressing the advanced or the fine source data at this time so uh, they're just wanting us to kind of click on the next to move on. And most likely they're going to want us to keep with the default value of Pega. Click submit to create and display the new request type data object. Okay, so once again, we're back to, you know, a default data object okay uh, you know as you could probably tell you know this this will happen pretty much every single time that you want a new data object you know it will create you know the id it will create the label and everything else will be pretty much default you know every single time so um Okay, so now in the system list, keep uh, add field to, to create a new field and the re request type data object. In the field name, enter type to name the field. Verify that type defaults to text single line. Click submit and add another to create a new field. Repeat steps one through nine, uh, seven through nine to add two more fields, description and department as shown in the following image. So once again, you know, the, the repeating of the steps is not correct uh, because you're not doing text single line every single time. So just bear that in mind. <laughs> so we're adding a new field. We are doing type. And it is a text single line for type. So submit and add another. The next one after that is going to be description. And that's going to be a text paragraph plain text. So plain text. There we go. Add another. 
Okay, description is done. And this one is just going to be a single line, so. Which it's our, you know, it already defaulted back to the text single line. It didn't stay with the text uh, paragraph. So, so just kind of bear that in mind. So click on it on submit, and there we go. So, you know, verify that everything here is the same as what you have there. So, you know, type, type, text single line. You know, my town 311, description, description, text paragraph, plain line, my town 311, department, department, text single line, my town 311. In the upper right, hit uh, upper right, click save to commit uh, the fields to the data object. So we can save. Okay. Uh, add records to the request type data object. So in the request type data object, click the records tab to display a table that uses the request type fields, type description, and department as the table headers. As you can see, type description department. On the records tab, under the type column, click add record to add a new record to the data object. So, uh, so we're going to go to records. Uh, as you can see, you see type description department here, um, and they want me to add add a record. I just want to make sure that everything is good here. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so we're gonna be adding some records here. So. Okay, so not only do we have the type, description, and department, but we also have a label. So bear that in mind. Um, they're not they're not filling in the labels, which is interesting, but it is what it is. So um, so first one is going to be park maintenance. Or the type description is damaged or broken park or playground equipment. And then we have department as person and recreation. Now I do kind of wish that they, you know, addressed what label is um, in this particular uh, instance. You know, uh, you know, for this particular example, you know, what, you know, what does label stand for? You know, um, does type, um, you know, is type the default label if label is not filled? Um, is label what you see when you when you like go to a view you know when you look at you know what records are contained within I don't really know um, but uh, they want me to repeat steps two through five to add three more records to the data object by using the information from the following table so um, so we're done with that now, if I hit enter, nothing happens. Tab, not much really happens there, but okay. So once I get go down here to add record, it saves everything in there. But all right, so next is pothole. Works. Oh, come on now! Don't do that to me. All right, the next one is also going to be in public ports, so I'm just going to take that and put that there. Uh, we have road debris, and 
this description. Add a new record because we have traffic signal. And this description. And we have traffic management. There we go. Click on out of it and it basically you know sets everything up now i mean you can you can click back on that particular uh row and as you can see it still kind of opens everything up um and refresh changes oh hmm that's interesting it put in a label um uh, no, I put in a alphanumeric value in there. Okay. <laughs> uh, not sure if that's something that they were that they know about or if they're aware of, but whatever. We're you know we kind of were messing around here, so. You know, I didn't necessarily click save at this particular moment in time. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, hopefully this label information doesn't um, mess up, you know, the future steps. We'll find out. Uh, we're going to click on the back arrow to go back out to the integration map to view it. So. So now we have person and request type. So now we're going to go up to the integration map and view it. Okay, and now you have my town with the internal pega with person and request type uh, with ties to that. Um, hovering over the, the lines here to see if there's anything that you can kind of get out of the, um, you know, they said data pages, but I'm not seeing any data pages there, so verify your integration map has both data objects pointing to the PEGA system record, which it does. So, and we are all done. So we're going to verify that challenge. And everything should be perfectly fine. There we go. Challenge complete. Um, I think there was, I think there was like one time where I did like a challenge. You went through like the, all the steps, you hit the verify challenge and it actually said, you know, sorry, this doesn't, it, this isn't verifiable and, or, or something like that. Like it doesn't pass. And it's like, wait, what? <laughs> um, I'm not sure if they fixed that yet or not, because it's been a while since I've touched these missions and modules so um but obviously they didn't cover everything for the data objects and like but um you know if you want to you can kind of mess around with this a little bit more you know see see what's available you know um, you know, you can look at the, um, you know, you can look at the data objects again. Um, notice the fact that, you know, the, uh, pre-generated values here, the IDs are under the Pega platform. So, um, and that you can't delete the globally unique ID, nor can you configure it. So bear that in mind, you know, uh, you know, when you, um, you know, as you proceed onwards on that. Now you can delete the label here. Is that a wise move? Probably not. You probably don't want to deal with that. Um, 
or you probably want to like maybe replace it if anything but we're gonna leave that alone because obviously that gets into um, a little bit more of you know pega platform manipulation and that might be out of scope for the system architect and definitely the business architect so um, so if you're if you're just working on the business architect don't be deleting too much here or configuring too much here um, matter of fact this this feels very you know when you're when you're dealing with data objects and you know what types they are and so on and so forth that I mean sure that might fall under the you know a business analyst you know can get to it because I mean you have it under App Studio but um, but I can also see um, a, a business analyst not really understanding you know what the difference is in the types you know um, you know there's a lot of there's a lot of different types here that you know the business analyst might not be understanding what what's going on there like you know they might look at it and go oh, what the hell is a boy and all about you know that that kind of thing um, um but you know the business analyst is meant to be you know the difference between you know the 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 bridge between business that has no like programming experience whatsoever you know they got their business degree you know they know all about you know markets and ads and so on and so forth you know i don't know that so you know but you know i have really no uh interest in it either so um but you know um uh, if i go to a if I go up to someone that like maybe deals with ads all the time and tell them, um, you know, what are the values of a bullion? They might, you know, they might not have ever heard of that before. And they might look at you going, what the hell are you talking about? You know, that kind of thing. Or maybe they, maybe they will, you know, it's hard to say, right? Um, but, um, I mean, they, they give the information very succinctly, you know, in that, hey, you know, if you want to have an email, there's an email, right? If you want a phone number, there's a phone number. If you want the URL or web page, there's the URL web page. Um, it's just there are some uh, parts of this, like integer and Boolean, that's more uh, in in line with you know the programming background so you know um, maybe they might maybe they do know you know but um, okay uh, okay so this is kind of a zoom in and out there There's your buzz out. I'm not quite sure why they have the little white box, gray box separation between the two, but I'm kind of curious how, how zoomed in can we go here. Giving me a lot of uh, room here for the uh, zoom in. All right, my alarm. All right. Well, um, I think that's going to be about it here, there, folks, for um, for the Pega development portion of the um, you know for the for the challenge. You know, we we verified everything here. Um, 
So uh, I'm going to go ahead and reset the pay instance. Uh, close that down. Because I'm, I was kind of wondering about the add data object, right? So let's see what happens if instead of clicking new, what happens if I just do the add data object? That's what I was kind of curious about. And you know, with these data, with these instances, I can play around all I want. You know, um, you know, allows me to kind of mess around with, um, you know, what's available in the challenge, and you know, kind of explore if I really wanted to. And I, I encourage people to do that. You know. Obviously, be careful because, um, well, not, no, I mean, be careful in a sense because, you know, you don't want to, um, uh, you don't want to um, get a, you know, wrong side of, or, you, you know, you don't want to, um, have bad habits, you know, um, you know, if you get used to doing it one way, um, and you aren't flexible to handle it, if someone else wants you to handle it in a different way, then, well, you're, you're basically shooting yourself in the foot. So, um, so just, you know, Uh, let's go ahead and go straight to data when it loads. There we go. Alright, so we're not clicking on new. We're going to go ahead and click add data object. What happens there? Um, let me go to webcam only because I'm 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 a little worried that they might try to do like a um, like an open window or something like that. Like hey hey you need, you're adding the object from your hard drive or something like that. But no, that's not the case. Um, I'm gonna go back to it. Same same difference here. Create data object. So. Um, is there anything different between the two? Doesn't look like it. I mean, you have, you have these two here, but I don't know if that was, um, yeah, those, those are the same. Okay. So. So there's really no difference between doing either one of those from from the looks of it. Now there might be something like maybe in the background. Um, otherwise, I don't know why they would have the both of these. Um, you know why have add data object when you already have new up there? And from from the examples here, um, you use new multiple times, uh, whereas the add data object here um, didn't really have, um, it wasn't didn't really stick around. So, so if I do like you know the person data object here. And I'm gonna skip adding the fields. I'll move. I'll I'll just go straight back to the you know data, and we'll see. You know, the, the, uh, is the add data object does the add data object remain? And I don't think so.
I forgot to get myself some food and I'm getting hungry, so I'm going to go ahead and order some food for myself. Sorry about that. I want to kind of get that process going. Um, okay, so we're we're here at the data model. Um, so we're gonna just kind of go back. You know, we'll be seeing the data model and the integration map up there. And as you can see, you know the um, the Add data object is not here at all. So, um, now personally, I would I would say you know, hey Pega, just remove that button altogether. You don't really need it. You know, this new is you know staying there, so you don't necessarily need that. You know, you don't need it. If if news going to stay there, you know, always, then this is redundant. It's unnecessary. You know, you can you can get rid of it from, um, you know, from this particular uh, view here. Now, here's a question. Now, if I click on delete. Will it remove everything here and go back to the data objects and integrations? Like, you know, the no data objects, will it show, do that? Let's find out. Uh, it does. Okay. Um, now, you know, it says that it deleted everything. Now, what happens if I try to cr recreate it. Will there be a problem? Nope. No problems, it seems. Now, um, there might have been, you know, if I, like, go into, like, go really in depth into uh, the application of um, my town 311 then there might be some uh, you know the the data object might be like labeled as something else than just person possibly you know um you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that's a hundred percent, but I'm just saying um you know, it's a possibility. You know, it might not have deleted everything from you know uh if I if I look in depth into the application. So but that's it. Um let me go ahead and close on out here. Um you know, uh, we are done with our create and model. We verified it, so everything is good on that. So, um, so we're going to be moving on to the next module.
uh, tomorrow, which will be back to local code app builder. which will be capturing and presenting data. So uh, they have it for 45 minutes. So we're probably not gonna be able to get through all three of them, all the three of the topics here, but we'll have fields, views, and calculating values, and then of course the module quiz. So we might be able to get through fields and views based off of the uh, times there, maybe. We might just do like, you know, fields only, then Maybe we can do both of these. We'll see. But that's for tomorrow. Uh, we're going to go ahead and close on out for tonight. Uh, at least for the um, Pega portion of this. Um, if you're watching this on Twitch, stick around. I'm just going to be going into the just chatting. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to be continuing my stream. Um, so you're welcome to join me You know, on my uh, Twitch channel if you want to see this live. Um, otherwise, you know, you can, if you're watching this on YouTube, you know, like, subscribe, comment, um, you know, all those, <laughs> everything that is, you know, the YouTube life, I guess. <laughs> um, you know, that would be helpful. Um, check out my other playlists, you know, mostly games. Um, but, you know, I have done some uh, different, you know, I've, I've done some other additional coding as well on this channel. So, you know, this isn't the only thing I've done. So, um, so go ahead and check that out if you, if you want. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah. And that's about it. I'll go ahead and stop the recording now.